Welcome everybody to a brand new rebuild and we're going to be taking on newly relegated Burnley. We're going to do what they couldn't do and that's stay in the division and um, try and get consistency above say top half. That's where we want to try and be. So if we just have a look at some of the history then. Their first division, they've won that in 1921 and 1960. FA Cup in 1914. Championship, League One. The Community Shield, they've won that in 1673, surprisingly enough. And oh, what's Anglo-Scottish Cup? Interesting. So they've only been in there consistently for the past uh, seven, six, seven seasons. And obviously the, the, they've just recently got relegated this season but we're not we're going to try and stop that they have been consistently underperforming i feel 17th a 10th place a 7th place is their highest position i think they've got apart from well 19th there 18th yeah 7th position is the highest they've got other than that they have been teetering around the bottom half of the table if we have a quick look then at uh, some of their players so let's have a look then so let's have a look at some of the bigger players that they have got they've got val Wargurst. 28-year-old striker. He looks pretty decent, though. Very nice. We could uh, work with him. He's 28 years old, though. Six foot six, though. Finishing, heading, jumping. Target man? Yeah, target forward. We're going to try and get something more out of him. I don't know about pressing. What's he like speed-wise? He's not all there, though, is he, is he really, for speed? So we'll have to have a look at that at some point. Uh, Maxwell Cornet, uh, 24-year-old. Out on the wings, more left-sided, I feel. So maybe we can do something there. He can play on the right-hand side as well, actually, inside forward or inverted winger. And pretty speedy as well, so that's kind of nice. We've got Brownhill as well. Again, another decent midfielder. He can play uh, midfield right, can play on the wings, can play cam. Defensive midfielder, I'm not sure what sort of position we're going to be looking at, but... That looks kind of a nicely rounded player. At 25 years old as well. Nick Pope, goalkeeper. Yeah, we're going to try and hang on to him. And if anything, see if we can get somebody else just to uh, ghost him for a couple of seasons. And then take over towards the end, maybe. We've also got James Tarkowski as well. Defender. Pretty decent, actually. Physicals look too, not too bad. Six foot one. He can head the ball as well. So that's going to be pretty nice. It's going to be pretty handy. Dwight McNeil, 21-year-old, very, very promising. Uh, potential looks really good. And he's a left winger, right winger. Hmm, I'm thinking wingers already in this formation. Not sure what sort of formation yet. I'm thinking more of a DM role uh, for Burnley, though, to be fair. Let's see what other players we've got. And a couple of more good players here. Charlie Taylor, Ben Mee as well. That looks pretty decent. Who else have got? Ashley Barnes at 31. Jay Rodriguez. They have got a lot of ageing players, though, if we have a look from top to bottom, though. Phil Barsley. Wow, I didn't realise he was still playing, though. Good old Phil. Ex-Manchester uh, United player, I'm guessing. He was there, yeah. Um, had quite a colourful season. He's played with uh, Sunderland quite a few years as well. Same with Stoke. Then going to Burnley. That's gonna. That's kind of nice. Uh, some of these players we can look for getting rid of, I'm reckoning. Uh, Hennessy as well. Wow, well, we might hang on to him just to keep him out of the club for uh, a couple of years. Aaron Lennon as well. Uh, Loughton, Cork, Stevens, Rodriguez, me, Ashley Barnes, Westwood, Goodmanson. Yeah, I tell you what, if we look at their side, really, they've got six players under the age of 27. It's a lot of work here, a lot of work to do. Uh, finances, what are they giving us? They've given us £20 million to try and rectify this. Not much wiggle room in the wages, so we're going to have to look to sell to bring in, I'm reckoning. But I do think uh, we do need to do something. If we have a look at the squad depth then, so if we have a look at their recommended 4-5-1, so they'd rather have players right through the midfield. I mean, I'm not adverse to it. It seems to be the better choice um, by my reckoning. Uh, just get everybody behind the ball. I was more thinking of having uh, wingers and the DM as opposed to a cam and maybe push on after that. Play direct football. Play defensively solid football. There's no other stipulations or uh, restrictions. So that's good. We've just got to fight bravely against relegation. Reach the fifth round and the fourth round. Okay, so for the first season, I think we've just got to avoid uh, relegation. Pick up a couple of players. 
and see what we can do. Right, let's have a little bit of a wiggle round with the formation of the players and see what we can come up with. So what has £20 million got us? Well, if we have a look at scrolling through the transfers, some of these were not uh, that I've done. There's a lot of transfers. They made £74 million in total. Nathan Collins comes. We've got the likes of uh, Hennessy in there, uh, uh, Weghurst as well, Fondra, Longstaff. Where is Sean Longstaff? He's one of my signings, actually. <laughs> right, OK, let's get into the signings that we have made then. So we have made a few. We've made Sean Longstaff one of our first signings. A midfielder, we wanted somebody young in there. Someone's going to last a little bit longer than some of the ageing players. And he looks pretty neat from Newcastle, obviously. He's £15 million. He's played a few games already. And I think he's going to be quite integral to the side that we have got already. We are building the team round. Then we brought in a left back. Uh, Joel Bogan is 19 years old. He's not getting game time at the moment, but he is available. But look at them stats. They look pretty good. Also, we bring in Sasa Lukic, midfielder. Uh, I'm not sure if he's going to play cam or DM yet, but he's quite versatile, I think. Very, very high potential. 25 years old. He's going to be with us for another few years yet as well. Again, we're looking for younger players. And uh, from what was available with the money we got available... He was a pretty good shout. There's a few other players coming in on a free. And then we bring in a loanee from Bayern Munich. Josip Stanisic. Right back. We are very short on right backs. And I want to try and use him as well. If he's any good, then we're going to try and bring him in next season. We think we've got an optional fee of 5.75 million. He's played for the Bayern first team, second team. I think he's going to be pretty good as well. If he is any good, then obviously we'll pick him up next season. But again, 21 years old and the potential looks very, very nice indeed. Tactically, we're going with the DM formation, the 4 one, two, uh, four, one, two, two, one. I'm guessing a 4 3, three DM wide, something like that. Uh, we've got Pope, Tarkovsky, Collins, the youngster. Stanisic, there, Lukic, Longstaff, McNeil, Cornet, and there, everywhere else is blank for the time being. But we left that one blank, so we know we've got a couple of players that can come in there. Uh, we left that as a ball-winning midfielder role. Schedule so far, it's been pretty good, actually. Uh, unbeaten right up until the last game we played against Liverpool. But we start off the Premiership with a 2-0 win over Southampton. Arsenal will win at home 2-1. With an 82nd and 88th minute goals from Collins and Weghurst as well. Fantastic. Blackpool with struggle with a, uh, on penalties. Goodmanson scoring in the 82nd minute equaliser after we uh, gone behind, which is annoying. But we do score all our penalties, which is quite good. And then Liverpool, which you probably would expect. But they had a player sent off as well and we still couldn't fight back. But uh, yeah, 3-0 as expected does leave us 10th in the table six points we're only three points off the uh top and uh we're just goal difference away from um european spots so that will be absolutely amazing the fa cup reached the fifth round and the caraboa we've drawn wigan after beating blackpool in the last round if we have a look at the preview they're expecting us to go down like in real life so we're going to try and avoid that if we can do that then we've beat all odds it'll be a very successful season so we are building slowly but surely but one thing i didn't tell you is um who we got actually uh, let go so we let go of aaron lennon i think he's only just come in on a free we let him go for fifty three thousand. Uh, ashley barnes has gone just under a million to fc lorient rodriguez has gone to troy's for seven hundred fifty thousand, and phil barsley has also gone to celtic for seventy four thousand pounds not an awful lot but again aging players we're not going to be using them so there's no point hanging on and plus they weren't going to sign a new contract so let's simulate season one and see where we end up. Right, <laughs> it looks like we only just survived. So we've done a little bit better than what Burnley have done in real life. We didn't finish near the bottom. Well, we are near the bottom, but we didn't get relegated. We survived by about five points. Only nine victories this season. That's disappointing. Newcastle, one of them, thought there's quite a few 4-2s in there. Though. But we do beat a Chelsea and an Arsenal. Okay, so that's an improvement, but yeah, I mean, 22 losses, losing to Norwich. Wow, that's uh, that hurts as well. We're not even anywhere near the scoreboard anyway, but wow. Uh, we scored 49 goals, 69 conceded. So you can see where the uh, problem lies. It is at the back. So that's something we are going to have to remedy. 
I think it all depends what they're going to give us. Right, okay, let's have a look. Some of the results then that have gone uh, not our way then. Right, we started off with a couple of victories. Arsenal and Southampton and then Liverpool, Man City. I mean, to draw them teams straight away, it's just hurts. And then we lose away at Leeds 4-1. Wow. Uh, then we beat Norwich, Chelsea. And wow, it's just 4-0 um, against Everton. Man U beat us 2-0. I mean, they're not massive scores. But again, Brentford we lose to at home. Wolves, Tottenham, Newcastle, Chelsea, Everton, Leicester. I mean, there's been a time where we've gone without a win. End of December to the beginning of March. It's a long wait without a win. Wolves we beat 3-2, then lose to Tottenham. And then it's just a dismal season really, isn't it? It's absolutely dismal. 5-2 against Man U there at Old Trafford. That We do beat Newcastle 4-2. That we saw, but yeah, 3 2, 3 1 to um, Liverpool. We do draw 2 2 with Leeds at the end of the season, though, so hurrah! But it's not, uh, it's not brilliant. There's a lot of games where we haven't scored any goals whatsoever, so we have really struggled. Maybe the DM position is not for us, maybe we have to pile more into the midfield, like a 4 5 1, or do we bite the bullet and go on the offensive and go with a cam? The FA Cup, we get as far as the fifth round after beating Burton and Cardiff. I mean, Burton, we only just win. Wow. We were behind the 76 and 91st minute winner, that one. Cardiff, again, very uh, tight. We were 2 0 up this time, but they have been away from home. And then we lose 4 3 with a 64th minute penalty there. And the Carabao Cup, uh, we beat Blackpool on penalties, like we saw before we started simulated. Then we go on to beat Wigan, 3-0. That's a nice little victory, although they did have a player sent off. And it took us to the 75th minute to break the deadlock. That's disappointing. And then we lose to Crystal Palace. Jordan Ayew on the 12th minute. Wow. that's That hurts a lot. It really does. Right, let's have a look at some of the yeah, squad stats then. I doubt very much it's going to be pleasant reading. Goals-wise, Weghurst has scored 18 goals, which is quite impressive for a 29-year-old. That's not bad. It's not bad at all. It has upped his value up a little bit, though. Uh, Nathan Collins at the back. Uh, was he one of our signers? I think he was, wasn't he? The 20-year-old. Uh, did we bring? I think we did bring him in, didn't we? Maybe not. Maybe I didn't bring him in. Maybe so he was already here before us. I got excited there a little bit. <laughs> but a uh, 21-year-old defender, he's going to be here for... Uh, he's going to have a quite good future. Hopefully, we just need to have somebody alongside him. Goodmanson, he did play rather well, actually. Five goals, though. But if you look at the contrast, though, a defender, second leading goal scorer for the club. That's that's poor. Really is. Uh, Neil, five goals. Cornet, four goals. He only got one assist, though. Um, maybe he's playing in the wrong position. I don't know. Uh, our other defender, Tokoski, three goals. That's quite impressive. Assist wise, Neil getting at 16, seven for Westwood. Loughton with a six as well. Goodmanson, Collins. Yeah, it's it's not great, is it? It's not great reading at all. That's uh, that's pretty dire. Right, okay. Let's. I just want to have a look at what the finances are like and see where we are at. Right, they're going to give us another 17, 18 million. Okay, I might be able to do something with that. We might have to bring in one or two players, I think, kind of chip away at these uh, these positions and hopefully by season five, we'll have a pretty good side at that point. We'll be back after the transfer window and we'll show you what we've done. Right, then a couple of signings that we have brought in. Then we've brought in a midfielder, a camera of Philippe Ergrinic. Yeah, I can't say his name either. <laughs> Swiss. He looks very, very good indeed. And uh, again, 23 years old. Not bad going at all. We pick him up from Luzerne for £5 million. He had a very good season last season. Two goals, eight assists, two player of the match awards. He's already played a few games for us as well. Just needs to adapt to the English league. And he should be okay. I'm quite excited to have him here. I think uh, we're going to go, as you can imagine now, or you probably can tell now, is that we are playing a cam at position and uh, let's hopefully it'll make a bigger impact than it than the DM did in the last season. But we survived. That was the main thing which carries us on through to this season. Be a pain if we got uh, relegated now, won't it? But very, very good potential as well. So that's what I was looking for also. It looks very nicely rounded. Not particularly defending wise, but if he's up there, I don't want him defending if he can help it. Our latest signing, I think this was our last signing, 
Alex Collado. Wow. Um, we picked him up from Barcelona, would you believe? He's going to be playing on that right-hand side, even as an inverted winger, hopefully, inside forward. He can play on the right, left, right, left, whichever side he can play, Cam. He can play midfield. But this is where we really want him to uh, destroy teams. I know we got Connet as well, but, you know, he needs some competition. He's very quick. Good determination and flares. Great technique. Dribbling. Let's get them dribbles up there, shall we? And for a meager £7 million, we say hello. 7.07 .07 last season, two goals, five assists. Hopefully, what a, like what Anil did last season, he's going to do exactly the same and provide our forwards with uh, some fire power. I, I'm hoping. Some goals, that's what we want. Get some assists in, please. The price goes up a little bit more. We're bringing a left back. Now, we did have Bagan as well, but I just don't think he's going to be ready. Uh, I think he's going out on loan, or he was going out on loan. Uh, but uh, we cancelled it because they wanted one million, but to buy him £1 million at the end of the season. I'm not going to let him go for anything uh, that low, at least anyway. Cause he's got potential. I want to try and use him towards the end of this save if we can. But 24-year-old Piquerez, he probably won't now. Very nicely rounded. He's, he's all in the yellows. Double figures all around. Great stamina. And, I mean, that's just gone up recently as well. And he looks very, very nice as well. £10 million. Very good last couple of seasons as well. He started off brightly already for us. And from SAP in Brazil. So I'm very, very excited to have him into the team. But yeah, £10 million. I mean, £20 million seems to be going quite far, doesn't it? And our last signing, really, is Morato, uh, defender. Um, he's got potential. He's 21 years old. And we pick him up from Benfica. £17 million, though. Uh, very good last couple of seasons already, if you can tell. 7.6, 7.3. 7.37 for us already. And... He looks just absolutely amazing as well. So hopefully he's going to bolster up our back four as well. We're still looking for a, a right back. We did have one for, uh, well, looking at one for £1 million. And then it, they just changed prices, didn't they? So we didn't quite get him. So quite annoyed. But, you know, there's always a silver lining when we get plays like this. So overall, we spend £39 million. There's a couple of freebies for the youngsters. But uh, 3.8 million we sell on. 9,500 for Hennessy. He's gone to Wickham. Uh, Peters has gone for up to 30,000 Sheffield Wednesday. These are bargains, really. Richardson, I think, is a youngster, half a mil. Jack Cork, 1.4 million to Strasbourg. And me, he's gone to Almera. Now, the reasoning behind me, despite being not too bad at the back, very professional and experienced, however... If we left him in the side, he's not. I don't want him to play any game time. We have left some room uh, in this position here. He was occupying that position all the time, so it doesn't give a chance for like the likes of Morato, Tukoski, or anybody else to try in there. I want Morato to get game time, so hopefully he's going to do that. But that's how we're lining up this time round. We're going with the cam roll. Ugrinich, McNeil, Longstaff. He's our he's our main man. Piqueres as well, and Pope and Collins. It looks pretty solid. The majority of them are on uh, international duties at the minute. But so far, it's not gone too bad. A uh, 12-0 thrashing. That's when we uh, brought some of the youngsters in. But look at Weghurst. He scored nine goals. Nine goals in this game. I mean, that's just ludicrous. And uh, Dwight Neal scoring as well. Uh, we did lose to BRG. I think this is a friendly cup final. I'm not sure who BRG are, actually. Uh, Braga, I think. I think it's Braga. We just had a recent rebuild. I remember it now. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's only a loss in the friendlies. Quite straightforward. We start our campaign against uh, Man City. We get s smashed 3-0. And then uh, we go on a little bit of a run. Forest win 3-1 in the Carabao Cup. Norwich, we win 2-1. West Brom win 2-0. And Brighton, 0-0. So it's not too bad overall. The table looks like this. We are in 8th position. 2 wins, 1 draw and a loss. 7 points. So hopefully we'll hang around the mid-table. We want to get a clear of the uh, relegation and be up there this time. Uh, the FA Cup reached the 5th round and the Carabao Cup reached the 4th round. We are into the 3rd round and we're playing Brentford. Tottenham and down at the relegation zone. Wow, they haven't won a game in 4. Who have they lost to? Arsenal, City and West Ham. 
and drawn with Norwich. Yeah, it's kind of, Norwich are kind of one of them uh, sneaky teams, I feel. Let's have a look, see where they pit us up against in the preview. They're predicting us to finish down near the bottom. Um, we're not going to try and do that. We're going to try and get up here mid-table if we can. So hopefully we're progressively changing the side. And by the end of it, we should be established mid-table, if not higher, if we can. It'd be nice if we got into Europe at some point. Conference, maybe, at the end. We'll see. So let's uh, go on. Let's sim season two. And we'll be back to have a look at the results. Right, this is a massive improvement then. Tenth in the table. So we were 16th last season. We've climbed up with 48 points. 16 ahead of relegation. Brentford, Brighton and West Brom all go down. Norwich escape. Wow, that's uh, that's huge. Norwich escape again. But we are only seven points off a European spot. Not even that. Six points off a European spot. Aston Villa nick it from Tottenham. Actually, it's probably seven points actually, isn't it really? Uh, Villa must have won a competition of sorts. But it's a big improvement though. We had nine wins last season. We got six, uh, We got 14 this time. 18 losses. We still managed to managing to concede quite a lot of goals though. So that is a real concern. But we do get a player onto the uh, charts. So interceptions made. Picrez, the left back, 126. So we start off not too bad. We have an unbeaten September with a win over Crystal Palace. Blackburn with a draw. And then we beat Arsenal 2-1. Wow, that's huge. And then we, we lose to Chelsea 3-0 and lose to Leeds at home. That's disappointing. But we beat Villa and Newcastle. But lose to Brentford and Fulham. These games we should be winning. Our away form is not brilliant at all, is it really? Just one game in November. We lose to Liverpool. One game in December, we beat West Ham, so that's nice. And then we lose to Leicester 3-0, but beat Man U at home. Corne with a um, 61st minute winner there. Excellent, that's good stuff. Then draw with Everton and then lose to Chelsea and Arsenal. Three wins on the bounce there, Leeds, Everton and Norwich. We lose 6-1 at Old Trafford. Oh, dear Lord, that's that sticks out like a sore thumb. Other than that, apart from that result, really, they're not really uh, bad results. We still don't uh, finish off strongly, so these two wins here probably cost us. I mean, we did beat Leicester 2-1, but again, the wins are very, very sporadic. The FA Cup, we don't even get past the third round. We lose to Fulham 3-2. The Carabao Cup, we fear just that extra round. We get knocked out in the third round. We beat Forest 3-1, and we lose to Brentford 2-1. We couldn't hold out for two uh, for like four minutes. Wow. Chelsea win the FA Cup and Man City win the Carabao Cup squad-wise. Let's have a look at the squad, see how well we've done. Uh, let's get it into the right place. There we go. Um, Weghurst has 20 goals and five assists in 33 games. That's not bad, you know. That's not bad at all. At 30 now, we are going to have to look to replace him and bring somebody in. I think that is a target we are going to have to look at, I reckon. Cornet with eight goals. McNeil, eight goals. He hasn't done well this this time round. I thought he might do better on the left-hand side. Maybe he want to stick him back on the right. Maybe, I don't know. Uh, Clado, five goals and 12 assists. That's not too bad. But not a lot of goals throughout the whole team, though. It's very, very sporadic. Our new cam, though, Philip Urignic, uh, three and one. Okay, I expect that a little bit better, but hopefully that might improve as well. Uh, Assist-wise, Collado, Roberts, McNeil. Okay, so that's okay. It's not enough. Definitely is not enough. Morato, I've uh, just noticed him down there. How did he fare this season? 36 games, one goal. Okay, it's not too bad. Not too bad. Uh, everybody else getting some game time as well. Brownhill, Sean Longstaff, one on one. Yeah, he needs to be a little bit better than this. Doesn't he? Potential is really good. Nathan Collins at the back. He's really coming to his own. Six goals under and an assist as well. That's pretty decent. Wow. Okay, we've gone big this time. Forty-six million pounds. They obviously can see potential, and just because we're short of the uh, European places, let's go and spend it and um, let's show off who we've brought in. Right then, the first of our signings, we bring in Billy Gilmore uh, from Chelsea, I think he is. £4.3 million. Already he's had a couple of games and an assist and he's playing pretty well. 
Uh, I thought for a, for a young un in the midfield, some more backup, some more bodies in there. He's going to get better. I've heard in the game that he is pretty good. So hopefully he'll uh, he'll live up to them expectations. But I'm quite excited to for 4.3 million. We can't grumble. This guy comes at an absolute steal. Five million pounds. It's Marco Milovanovic. I think. <laughs> I can't pronounce it. I do apologise. Three goals in three games. One assist. One player of the match. 7.5. I mean, £5 million. Bargain, bargain, bargain. 20 years old as well. So hopefully, I mean, we've got him until 2028. So he's going to be here to the rest of the rebuild. Although I do feel there is a £57 million uh, yeah, release clause. So hopefully he won't go anywhere just yet. Next one, we're bringing... Ianis Hadji. Oh my god. I mean, we're picking these guys up on bargains from Rangers as well. I mean, look at these attributes. Free kick taking, corner taking, absolutely amazing. 14 and a half million, rising up to 17 and a half million. We couldn't say no. 14 goals for Rangers last season of six assists and five player of the matches. 7.23 already for us. A goal and a player of the match. I think he's going to be really, really good for us as well. And he's going to really uh, bolster up our attacking options. And a final signing is a left back, a right back, wing back, wing, whatever. Uh, we wanted somebody at right back really, but he can play either side. So that's going to be quite handy for us. He's very, very quick. And it's Felix Agu. He comes from Werder Bremer. £16 million, rising up to 21 He's playing some good football. That's all I can say. His attributes look pretty. His physicals look amazing. That's all I can say. I'm just like so excited that we managed to pick him up. And don't, we had £46 million. Pounds. Don't forget. We didn't spend all of it. We've only spent £40 million. Pounds. Some players came in on a, a free. But out the door go. There's quite a few players actually. Uh, Nati Vidra goes to Brentford for £89,000. Norris, the goalkeeper, goes to Liverpool for £275,000. Westwood's gone for four hundred and fifty to Maccabi Haifa. Uh, Charlie Taylor's gone to Transport. And uh, Goodmanson has gone uh, to Dinamo. £3.5 million. We're just offloading some uh, older players, unfortunately. But yeah, some uh, youngsters going out on loan and a lot of them have been released. Especially uh, Kevin Long, he's gone. Loughton, he's gone as well. So yeah. Uh, there's nothing we could really do about it. They didn't want to sign another contract. So let's let's just offload them. Ease the wage bill, as it were. We've started okay in the friendlies. Then we kick off our season with a 3-2 victory over Manchester City. With the winner coming from Colado as well. Phenomenal. Uh, Newcastle, 3-0. I don't really know what happened here. We lost 3-0 away from home. But Barrow in the Carabao Cup, we win 4-1. And Fulham, we win 3-1 as well. So I'm very happy with that. We pick up Man City in the Carabao Cup third round away from home. So that's going to be really interesting, isn't it? Table-wise, we're where we normally are after three games. Two wins. That's not too bad. We're just outside the European places. So hopefully we'll uh, be there or thereabouts. But let's have a look where we are preview-wise. Uh, we're climbing the table up a little bit. 200-1 to 1 now. So we're in mid-table. So hopefully that's where we will finish off. Big fees. Tonali goes to Liverpool for 74. Harvey Barnes goes to Newcastle for 72. Newcastle are making in Rose, aren't they? Leon Bailey goes to Real Madrid. So uh, Aston Villa losing. Ibenaz goes to New Newcastle. have been buying players, haven't they? Wow, some big, big players going. Let's simulate season three. Let's hope we can do a little bit better than last season. We want a European place this time, if we may, please. Season three is over and we've finished in the 13th position. Wow. Um, okay, it's not an improvement on the 10th position. However, other teams have done a lot, lot better than what we have, obviously. But... Uh, Points-wise, last season we got 48 points and we finished 10th. 10th, you had to get 53 points this time. We're not there yet, are we, really? But having looking at all the um, wins and draws, 13 wins, it's less than last time, last season. We've got 8 draws, which is slightly more, which is the most we've had over the three seasons so far. And 17 losses is the least we've had. So we're going in the right direction. We've scored more goals, we've scored 50 goals, and we've conceded less goals as well. So that's going up and coming down. Minus 10 goal difference. So the previous seasons is minus 29, minus 13, now minus 10. I suppose looking at that way, it is an improvement, but it's not great. But we are surviving. We are surviving comfortably, I'd say, 17 points above relegation. 
we just need to fare better in the league and really we want to get to at least 10th position and above if we can Leeds sneak into 9th position Newcastle are on New Europe Chelsea Tottenham Everton are there in 4th in the Champions League no less Liverpool in the league again Sheffield United Blackburn and Watford all go down and Norwich once again escape some players to take note and cross completion 53% the bet we have the best uh, cross completer as it is in our team and Felix Ago has made the most interceptions with 152 followed by Nathan Collins as well at the back that is superb if we have a look at our results then we weren't too bad actually going into round about i suppose end of october only losing a few games uh two games in fact four one to everton wow uh, not scoring enough though i think but uh we did beat arsenal one nil in that though and then the next couple of months we had arsenal everton and aston villa we then played chelsea wolves we win and we lose to Leeds. Leeds seem to be a powerhouse currently after escaping uh, relegation in that first season. But wow, look at this. Uh, then we play Liverpool. Draw with Norwich. Lose to West Ham. Draw with United. So that's not too bad. And lose to uh, Leicester. But the losses. Oh, look at this. We just seem to fall asleep mid-season. And then we, you just can't recover. Newcastle will lose 5-4 against Man City. We're uh, taking the winner coming in the 93rd minute. Looking at that, we were 3 0 up after 8 minutes. 3 0 after 8 minutes. Let that just sink in. And then it comes to the last 15 minutes and we just fall apart. Well, not even 15, 20 minutes. We just fall apart. 4 1 up, 50, 20 minutes to go. And we just cave. And then we lose 6 1 to Manchester United as well. Uh, we do. Bounce back with a win against uh, West Ham. And then Norwich we lose. Tottenham we lose. Lose to Liverpool. Wolves after beating them 3-0 at home. We do beat Leeds and Sheffield United. Although our finishing is a little bit better this time. Just a one loss in the final uh, five games. FA Cup we beat Crew 2-1. And then we lose to Man City. Like I said we might do. Or was that the Carabao Cup? But uh, Did we play Man City in the Carabao Cup as well? I don't know. But a 4-1 loss to Man City there. Uh, we do get a goal in the 93rd minute, but obviously it's uh, too little too late. And yeah, we did play Man City in the Carabao and we lost 3-2 away this time. It's not helping all this. It's not healthy, is it, really? Moving on to the squad then. How did we fare? 24 goals for Marco, though, so that's not too bad. And McNeil scores 12 goals and 13 assists. That's that's an improvement from last time. Haji, 6-9. and nine. That's a good season for him. Uh, Corne as well, five goals. Again, the goals are just not enough throughout the whole team. I really don't know what to do to get these players scoring goals because it's just not happening at all for the majority of them. Assist-wise, McNeil, we've got Hadji. Again, it's just not enough people getting involved, I don't think. Not at all. At the back, though, so uh, what about our defenders? What did our defenders do? So we've got Morato, one goal in 41. Not great, is it, really? Collins, three goals. Uh, who else is there? I mean, nobody really. Picarius gets five assists, though, so that's good. And Agu, four assists. Okay, so our wing, wing backs aren't doing too bad. But on a whole, the team just uh, is not playing well at all. Two seasons to go, we've got to try and improve something. We're be being given another £42 million. I think we're going to have to invest in a goalkeeper. I do think that's where partially where the problem lies. And maybe uh, another midfielder. Someone who's strong. Not sure who they. Pope. He's 32 years old now. As you can see, he's just not uh, It's not brilliant at all, is it, really? 65 con goals conceded in season 1. 55, then 60. But if we look at it as a whole. 74 and 41. 61 and 40. And 69 and 42. It's um, It's not good. Is that not enough clean sheets for my liking? I think we are going to have to go down the route of finding another goalkeeper. I think that is for certain. Right, okay, let's go on to the transfers. And uh, let me let me impress you. We've had quite a busy summer, let me tell you. We've brought in quite a few players as well. And uh, also we've let a few go. But the first one comes in. He's uh, Kevin Lemonaco. Um I think he's on loan from Liverpool, actually. Liverpool were quite prepared to let him come out on loan. I'm quite happy to have him here as a backup at the centre-backs. We are kind of, uh, for, for players to come in, if players are injured, we're kind of short on them. So 
I think he's quite decent as well. Six foot. He's pretty good physical. His determination and flair is pretty high up as well. And uh, I'm assuming he can tackle. 15 tackling. I'm happy with that for a... Uh, a centre back. We also bring in Danilo Piera. We wanted another striker. As you can imagine, we had to let one go. Can you guess who he is? <laughs> Put it down in the comments below. But um, Danilo comes in again, just a backup, but he can play left and right wing and uh, also up front. So quite versatile. So if any of our front four get injured, he's going to pop straight in. But yeah, I'm very, um, I'm happy about this deal as well. Eight million pound going on to eleven million pound from Middlesbrough from the Championship actually, or are they actually are they in the? I think they may have got promoted again, gone straight up from League One back into the Championship. But um, he's been pretty solid for him for the last couple of seasons, so hopefully he can do the job when he's called upon. We bring in a goalkeeper, Dominic Livakovic. He's a world class goalkeeper and. I think he he could stabilise us at the back. His fingers crossed, at least anyway. But very, very good otherwise. I mean, 19 one-on-ones, reflexes 18. He's got a good throw on him. So if we compare uh, our new goalkeeper in the orange, as you can see, he's very, very superior. Um, shot stopping, distribution, speed. I mean, he's a lot better, so I think he's a massive upgrade on uh, poor old Nick. We bring him in from Dinamo in Croatia, £17 million. He's been very solid for him for the past couple of seasons, so um, if he can concede less than 50 goals, it's a win-win. We spend again, this time on a left-back, uh, Sergio Regulon, 27 years old. Yeah, we, we couldn't find anybody young enough that was good enough to come in or cheap enough. And uh, we've gone for experience. He's fully determined... And we pick him up from Tottenham. £17 million. Pounds. Don't know whether he's going to be actually a backup or a first teamer. But I'm, I'm sure he's going to share the position with Picares as well at that left back position. But I thought we needed somebody really as a backup. But he looks very still good at 27 years old. He's very, very pacey. So maybe he might get the nod ahead of him. Who knows? And finally, our last signing, Rolando Mandragora. Italian midfield we wanted somebody big in there and I think he's going to do it all right for his is a play we haven't conceded a goal when he's been playing for us that's for sure but um he's just got himself injured currently so I'm not sure how long he's going to be out for I'm thinking he's going to be back very very shortly I'm hoping I can't see where it is where he's injured he might be back now he might be back but uh 25 million pounds from Torino he's not been prolific but he has uh, helped out in the last season with uh, assists as well. So that's what, we're, uh, that's what we're aiming for here. But he's spent all his time in Italy. We bring him to England. Hopefully he's going to pick up. But already three games, one assist, 6.83. There's a long way to go yet. But attributes look very, very nice. He's got uh, good passing at 15. Very good technique. He can tackle as well. Mentals look really, really nice. And he's got a fantastic first touch as well. Pass and go. Uh, but he does want to play as a Carello. So that's what we're going to be giving him this season. That brings our spend into £68 million. There's a lot of players coming in on a free, going down to the youth uh, teams. But out the door, go. Uh, Lukic has gone for £4.2 million. Weghurst has gone to Roma for eight and a half. We lose Nick Pope on a free. He didn't want to sign a new contract, so off he trots. And I'm sure there was somebody else that went through uh, that went as well. Let's have a look at some, some released players here. Uh, Brownhill, he's, he's gone on a free transfer. He didn't want to sign a new contract. And I think that was a, a that was it from the first team as well, I feel. Our preseason's gone up fantastically. And that's where our midfielder got injured. So we conceded in that one. Didn't concede that one. So we start off the campaign against um, Man City. 1-1. One, one. McNeil with the goal. He was um, sought after this summer. He's not. He's with us till 2027, so we're not. no intention of letting this guy go. I'm just hoping he hasn't got a release clause. But uh, we do go ahead and Erling Haaland scores in the 92nd minute, which is a uh, soul-destroying. Uh, Leicester City, we were 1-0, one 1-1, nil, one, 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 and then uh, Marco scores a goal. The equaliser on the 53rd minute. Disappointing to come out with a draw. I was hoping for a win there, but away from home, we have been struggling. Carlisle, away from home. We do take the lead after four minutes, but we get the win in the 82nd. McNeil again. I think he's scored in all our games so far in the league. 
So he's uh, going for leading goal scorer. And then the last game that we played Liverpool away 2-0. Dropped points already. But I think we're in a better position or we're in a better stead of players this season. So hopefully, fingers crossed, we can go and... Um, Go a little bit further up the table. So if we have a look preview wise, they put us down to 300 to one. I'm sure that we were 200 to one before, but still in 13th position. So they're still expecting us to linger around here. But until we get star quality players, which is highly unlikely, um, it may mean blowing the budget on one player. Are we prepared to do that? Probably not. So. Um, Mid table is expected once again. We just need survival. If we can get up to European spot, that'd be fantastic. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. But look at the transfer spending: one point two four billion pounds, hundred nine million for Havertz going to PSG. Okay, so Chelsea must have bought some players. Anthony from Ajax, Ferran Torres from uh, Barcelona, Newcastle spending again, Demiral and Gallon. But Man City get Gnabry for uh, 73 million pounds and Fofana uh, to buy Munich from Leicester for 77. So did Leicester buy anybody? Nobody big of note. So some of the teams, the top teams have uh, strengthened. Obviously some of them have uh, hopefully weakened themselves. But uh, we'll find out after we sim the next season. So season four is on its way. Fingers crossed. Let's go and do it. Wow, uh, there you have it. That's the FA Cup final, ladies and gentlemen. The FA Cup final. We beat Man City. We get to the final right the way through. We've beaten a few big teams along the way. We'll show you in just a second. But uh, we beat Man City 2-1 after going behind in the final. And that also puts us into Europe. I'm not sure which competition it is. I'm sure it's the Europa League. But once again, we'll have a look in just a second. But that is absolutely amazing. Well done, the, well done, the lads. Hadji, was he player of the match? I don't think he was, was he? Uh, I'm not sure who was the actual player of the match, uh, to be fair. It might have been Hadji. It was. Hadji, well done, son. Absolutely brilliant. McNeil and Hadji both getting the goals. Everybody else playing the part absolutely fantastic and there's confirmation we do finish 11th in the table however a point behind West Ham in 10th position and we're only I think it's nine points from fifth position as well so a much much better season this time round 15 wins by far our most so far this rebuild nine draws and 14 losses which is amazingly by far um the least losses we've had as well in the four seasons that we've played. We've scored 56 goals, which is the most, and only conceded 52. And we finish on a plus goal difference as well. Even better, and it is our most points haul as well. I'm not sure whether that's a record for us while we've been in the uh, Premiership, but it doesn't really matter. But that is, uh, that's phenomenal, and to be in the Europa League as well, it's even better. How did we fare results-wise? Well, we didn't get off to the best of starts, uh, couple of draws at the beginning we were very very um trying to find our way into this league trying to get our foothold on things just the two wins in the first few months leading up to the end of november and then all of a sudden it seems to have clicked any big scores and we did beat brentford 4-2 though um okay so going into december then and this is where we start to pick up points finally the win against wolves and brighton we do draw with uh, west Ham and lose to Everton a good win against Newcastle we lose to Chelsea but we beat Leeds nice 5-0 win over Brentford followed by a 3-2 victory over Arsenal however we do lose to Newcastle again uh, we lost to Man City there wow that's uh, that's not good <laughs> well 
to beat them in the FA Cup final, I'm, I'll be quite happy with that. I don't care. Um, Brighton once again a win there. West Ham would lose. It's still not consistent enough though, I feel. Tottenham will lose in April and in May we lose to Liverpool. But we do finish strong though, however. A 5-1 victory over Crystal Palace, a 2-1 over Fulham, 3-1 over Wolves. We do beat Norwich and we beat United at home 1-0. Scott McTominay got sent off and uh, we scored not long afterwards. So a nice... Uh, victory over them there as well so that's kind of helped us it's a pretty good finish to the season we've got one more to go hopefully the last season is uh, just as emphatic but uh, that's pretty decent the Carabao Cup before we move on to the FA Cup run Carlisle will beat 2-1 and we lose to United on penalties in the third round oh dear it's just swings and roundabouts isn't it you don't know what team you're going to face but the FA Cup run, wow, look at that. We beat Man United at Old Trafford. I'm not sure what sort of side they had out there. They've got Vintner as well. Uh, Hat-trick for Marco, excellent. And Philippe scores a goal and uh, Collada as well. That is magnificent. 3-1 uh, victory over Arsenal in the next round. I mean, we, we said big teams. Marco again, Haji Morato this time. We beat Southampton penalties. Then we beat QPR 3-0 in the quarters. West Ham, we win 3-0 in the semis. Uh, Marco's getting a few goals as well. And uh, that that marvellous win in the uh, in the final, absolutely superb. So here's the confirmations of all the competitions then. Um, the Carabao Cup was won by Man City. Okay, so they can't win everything. Um, that's nice, isn't it? We get ourselves a trophy. Let's have a look at the squad, see how well they did then. So let's go by goals then. Okay, not many goals, but McNeil is uh, starting to look really good now, isn't he? Uh, Marco with uh, 19 goals. We've got McNeil with 18 goals. Not many assists though, so he's uh, more into scoring then, so it seems. Hadji with 7 goals. Morata with 7. There's a few more players getting goals, so that's uh, quite good as well. Any of the defenders? Uh, Mandragora. Five goals and ten assists. Fantastic. Sean Longstaff, four and six. Excellent. Assist-wise, and 16 for Haji. And uh, Mandagora, he's um, ten as well. Collado, uh, Longstaff, Marco. Okay, the, it's a lot, lot better this time round. A lot, lot better. It's a good platform for next season, I think, if we, can, uh, if we get any more money. Especially if we're going to be in Europe as well. So, going into the final season, they're going to give us nearly £50 million. We could certainly do something with that. And maybe we need to look at, I don't know, I really don't know what positions we maybe need to look at. Probably another defender, a left back maybe. I think the goalkeeper helped us as well. And speaking of the goalkeeper, let's have a look how well he did. So, uh, Dominic, how well did you do? He looks really good, actually, doesn't he? So, he conceded 50 goals in the league. He missed one game, though. 57 and 45. I tell you what, that's a lot, lot less than uh, what we were conceding under Nick Pope. So, yeah, he has. So, he has So he has made a big difference, I feel. But I'm just not sure where we're going to go to improve. So, let's go and spend this money. And we'll come back and we'll have a look who we've brought in for the final throw of the dice right just a few signings then Kevin Lamanaco he comes in from Liverpool we remember we um, had him on loan last season there was a clause that we could buy him for 10.75 million pound and we have just done that ball playing defender at the back I think he's gonna I think it's a smart move to have 23 years old here for quite a while actually four years uh, there's confirmation 10.75. He had a good season with us last season, 10.06. But he's, he's been he's pretty reliable. I'm not going to lie. So that's nice to have at the back. We pick up also Matthias Rezzo forward. We want someone to challenge Marco up there. I think he's got a little bit lapsy daisy with uh, not scoring enough goals. So I want him to score around about 20 to 30 goals in a season. Burnley are starting to look really good. We've picked up the FA Cup. We're in the Europa League. We need players like him. Uh, a staggering 36 million with add-ons though from Leeds 
Eight goals last season for Leeds at 7.03. Uh, he's played one game for us so far. Marco's decided he wants to pick it up a little bit, so he scored a few goals, so he's keeping him out at the moment. And on top of that, we bring in Noni Maduke. Shadow striker we're going to play him as, just behind Marco Orezzo. And he looks really good, doesn't he? Dribbling. He's got good composure. He's got great flair. His stats just says it all, but a staggering £55 million. Pounds from PSV. 10 goals last season, 6.98, but the previous seasons he's had good ratings, but performance-wise I don't think it's been as good, but already a 7.2 in his first three games for us. I'm quite excited to see what will happen now, because we've almost changed the whole of the side than what we started with, I believe. So I'm really, really happy to see what happens uh, this season. So £86 million spent in total. We do say goodbye to... Uh, Baggin, he's gone for 1.1 million to Birmingham. We also say goodbye to Connor Roberts, Tarkowski, and uh, Markel's gone out to lane. But the other two have uh, gone out unafraid. They didn't want to sign another contract. So uh, you don't want to stay? Goodbye, you know, we're in Europe. I don't understand why they didn't want to hang around. So not even the, the lure of Europe could ever even um, keep him here. I'm disappointed, I really am. So far this season's been pretty good. We've been unbeaten, quite a few clean sheets. Uh, um, amongst them results, you'll notice, is the Charity Shield. We beat Liverpool 3-2. Absolutely amazing. 2-1 down. We score straight after they score the second one through Marco. And then McNeil scores the winner on the 72nd minute. Absolutely brilliant. To add that to the FA Cup the previous season... Fantastic. Leicester we beat 4-2 and Fulham we beat 3-0. McNeil is uh, scoring goals once again. And Marco, told you scoring in every game so far. Competitively at least anyway. We are lying third in the table. Joint top in fact. Uh, only on goal difference. So. And we've drawn Milan, Basel and Maribor in the Europa League. We're defending the FA Cup. We don't know who we've got yet, though, but to reach the fifth round, there's no expectations there. And we've drawn Blackburn in the Carabao Cup, and there's confirmation of another trophy, the Community Shield. I, I'm, I'm excited. This has been quite a successful rebuild as far as I'm concerned. An FA Cup, Community Shield, we're in Europe. I think that's been quite successful so far, no matter what happens here. But I'll be disappointed if we do not go further in the Europa League, though. With that being said, just before we start the simulation, let's have a look where we've previewed. Oh, we've gone up to 11th, 150 to 1. So the few buys that we have got have uh, helped us incredibly. And uh, just take a look at some of the big fees being paid out. Uh, Chelsea lose Cliver for uh, 64 million. Man City buy Theo Hernandez. For 59, Man U get Timber for 59 million pounds. There's talk of that currently. Liverpool buy Angelina for 53. Buy Munich take Poro. But there's our massive signing, Madueke or Maduki. I apologise if I don't know how to pronounce it. But Newcastle keep on spending 37 million there for Sesco. Even Villa have bought somebody Vigo and Chelsea have bought Todibo from Juventus. Right, okay, let's start the simulation. We're into the final season. Let's see how far we can go. And let's have some European glory, please. That was another final. It was the Europa League Cup final. We've beaten Arsenal in the final. We've picked up another trophy. This is apps. I can't believe it. I really can't believe it. It'll be interesting to see where we did finish up in the league as well. If we managed to get to the Europa League. I did say I'd be upset if we didn't get out of the group stages. But I didn't think we'd actually get to the final. And it was an all English final as well. Arsenal must have dropped out of the Champions League or unless they were already in the Europa League as well. I don't know. But we kind of uh, did okay. XG, we played a lot, lot better than them. 1.34 to 1.29. I mean, it's 14 shots to 11 in Arsenal's favour. 62% possession we had. So I think on a whole, we deserve to win. Passes completed 90% to their 79. We didn't win as many tackles. And not as many headers as well. We didn't have any yellow cards. But I've, but on a whole, our players played a lot better than they did. Oh my word. That's marvellous. 
Let's go and have a look, see where we've finished up in the league. And we finish in ninth position and we get ourselves a Euro Champions League spot as well. Unfortunately, we're not going to go into the uh, next season because we're only a five-season rebuild and uh, a second season in Europe. That's going to be... Uh, I think this uh, rebuild's been absolutely successful. Uh, ninth position, 16 wins, which is uh, more than all the other seasons. Nine draws, 13 losses. The losses keep coming down, which is even better. 55 goals scored. 52 conceded. I think 52 conceded is the same as last year. A plus goal difference, which is all that matters. And 57 points, which I think is our most as well. Igu is a second in interceptions made. But that's about it for all of that. Let's go and have a look at some of the uh, results then that led us to this point. But 13 losses, it's quite a lot still. So we started off okay. We get our first loss against Newcastle. Um... Bournemouth, Chelsea we draw, Everton we win, draw with West Ham, fine, we lose to Arsenal, any big scores coming in there, Tottenham we beat 1-0, we draw with Man City and beat United, not a very good month in January, a couple of losses there against Chelsea, Arsenal, some more losses, Man U uh, get their revenge on us, Leicester beat us, yeah we have a lot of losses towards the end of the season, we kind of fell away, we kind of a little bit more knackered at that point, I'm assuming it's because of the toll of the Europa League at this point, Liverpool we lose two, but we do beat Man City 1 0 there. Towards the end of the season. 6 2 loss against Wolves. Wow. Beat Norwich, Leeds, lose to Newcastle 1 0 last game of the season. Disappointing, but 6 2 against Wolves. What? There's no big massive scores in there. 4 1 against West Ham, though. Okay, not too bad. Let's move on to the next competition. The FA Cup we get as far as the quarterfinals. We lose to Liverpool 2 0 after overcoming Reading. Brighton and Coventry. Carabao Cup, we don't seem to do well in that. We win on penalties against Blackburn and then lose 2-1 to Spurs. And then the Europa League. Let's have a look at this then. So Basel, we win 6-1 and 4-0. Milan, we win 2-0 and we lose 2-0. Okay, not too bad. And Maribor, 3-0 and 5-1. So the group, we finished second. So, that, I mean, that's pretty good, actually. Same level of points as Milan with, obviously, a win each. We scored 20 goals in that as well. Only conceding four. So that's really nice as well. Uh, Regulon gets the most assists, uh, joint most assists. And Morata and Felix, interceptions made 59 each all the way at the final. So that's pretty good as well. We are uh, the second... Leading goal scorers in the Europa with 34. Leeds scoring 37. Chances created. Arsenal 75. We get 64. And got games without losing two. And that is about it. Okay, nice. Okay, at least uh, we made an impact in Europe. That's for sure. But getting back to this then. So in the first knockout round, we play Garatasaray. We win that 5-2 on Agria, overcoming a 2-1 deficit. Valencia, we win 1-0 overall. Hadji scoring the only goal of the, the two legs. Benfica, we win 4-2 and lose 2-1. So a 5-4 victory in the end. That goal from Hadji is sending us through. Milan, we overcome a first leg deficit of 1-0 down. And we win 2-0 with uh, Longstaff and Cornet scoring the goals. And then uh, we saw that goal uh, in the final, Marco getting the winner on 76 minutes. There's confirmation of all the uh, cups then. So we do win the Europa League, another trophy, even better, to go alongside our shield, our charity shield that is. Man City win the FA Cup in the end and Tottenham win the Caraboa. So let's have a look at our squad for the final time as well then. It seems very, very depleted. So goals and 35 goals from Marco, 12 from McNeil, Hadji. So what did um, Arezzo do? Did he not? He didn't play many games. He's not going to be happy about that. But it did give Marco a kick up the backside. That's for sure. 35 goals. That's what we wanted him to score. 48 games in total. Um, Hadji scoring nine as well. That's pretty good. Madueki as well. Shadow striker on nine goals and 11 assists. That's pretty decent. Morato, Corne, uh, Colorado got uh, 6 and 13. That's nice. Collins, the defend centre back, uh, 4 goals. Mandragora, 3 and 9. Longstaff, 3 and 5. Uh, Philip with uh, 5 assists. Agu I mean, it's right through the whole team this time. 
Have we lost a goalkeeper? How well did he do? How well did he do? Just uh, having a quick look. 52 goals conceded this time. 73 overall. He conceded a fair bit this time round, didn't he? But he did get 16 clean sheets this uh, this season in total. Okay, we can uh, forgive him for that. But I'm, I'm expecting to be a little bit better. But going back to uh, the assists then. Collado, Haji, Madueke, uh, Agu, Mandragora. I mean, a lot of assists right through the whole team. That's what I expect to see. Finally, I have to say, and I'm sure you will agree, an FA Cup winner's trophy. We win the Charity Shield. We finish ninth. We win the Europa League as well in the final season. So we've done a Pretty well. The last couple of seasons have been really up the ante a little bit. And to top it off as well, for the sixth season, we are in the Champions League. And that's where we want to be. Two years on the bounce now in Europe. That is phenomenal. And that's really good. I mean, the league will probably take a, a sidestep if we're in Europe. But that's fantastic. I wonder if they'll give us more money, though. Let's have a quick look. I'm intrigued. 26 million, it's not going to be an awful lot, is it, really, to be fair? Let me know down in the comments below if you take this challenge on. Where do you finish? What trophies do you win? Do you get them into Europe? Smash the like button on the video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to the channel as well if you haven't done so already. And until the next rebuild, thank you very much for watching. Thank you.